We have an exciting interview with Shavahat, a dedicated realtor for New Brunswick, interviewed by my friend Johar and recorded by me. The questions asked by Johar explore the local real estate market, buying and selling trends, and what it takes to become a realtor in 2024. This is the one you don't want to miss. Plus, I have got more fascinating interviews lined up with industry experts, so stay tuned and subscribe. Since I purchased my house, I used to be the person who always would help everyone, all of my friends to do this purchase. Yes. So I was kind of uh, still involved in real estate even before I got licensed. Decent house in the desirable neighborhoods where you want to grow your family, you want mm -hmm. nice schools and everything. I mean, you should be looking at spending around three to... I, I think the best uh, way to answer this question is that I'll take my own example. How uneducated I was when I was in the market to buy my own house. It's like the it's like that the seller has appointed that listing agent who is listing the house in the market but you want to make sure you are working with one person. Pre-approval is not the guarantee that you're gonna get the financing for the house. Buy as soon as possible you can to mm -hmm. do the planning, right? Yes. And always, I would say that give this house a commitment for at least four to five years. It's never going to happen that you will get a perfect house, right? I mean, the house where I live in, it's, it's a very nice house, but of course, it's not perfect, right? My wife doesn't like the kitchen. <laughs> right? At the end of the day, every situation is different, every situation is unique. Yes. This is why it is very important that you have to be having a knowledgeable professional working for you. So I mentioned a bit about how cluttered the market is, how, yes. how busy is it because the inventory is less, there are more buyers. Mm -hmm. As a result, there are multiple offers on the table. Don't get upset if your offer is going to be rejected. Believe me, you will find something but just stay on path, just make sure you're following the advice of your, of your realtor. Let's be honest, realtor's job looks very fancy from the, from, from, from the outside, right? Because yes. I mean, of course, you would be feeling that this guy is selling houses, making commission and making good money. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Uh, we get paid by the commission. Uh, the government wants to make sure that you're not skipping anything. All the paperwork is accurate, you know? Mm -hmm. There is no money laundering going on. Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. Today I'm joined by Brother Shabbat Shakil, who is a father and has done his bachelor's in internet working and communications, and is also an alumni from Dalhousie University, and is currently working as a licensed professional realtor in the province of New Brunswick. Good morning. Good morning. How Thank are you doing today, Shabbat Bhai? <laughs> very good. Thank you for the uh, very generous introduction. Uh, truly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, uh, Shabbat Bhai, I'll start with the first question. Uh, please, can you give me a, a background about how you started into this career and what sort of, where do you come from? How did you transition into the, this career and what's your education background? Uh, so I've done my uh, bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering from India, which is my country of origin. Uh, I moved to Canada as a student back in 2011. Uh, I came to Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia. I did my master's in uh, networking from uh, Dalhousie University. Okay. After that, I started my corporate job uh, with a company uh, where I started as a technical support engineer, and then I grew myself up to senior operations manager. Uh, I worked with that company for about seven, eight years, okay. and then during this time, I was also planning to basically do something on my own, and then I decided to uh, basically quit my job. I I think around the end of 2020 year, uh, after almost uh, seven, eight years working with that company. Uh, the reason I've quit the job is because we were working in the background, me and my business partner, who is also my cousin, uh, we were uh, working to start our own business. This has always been the plan, but you know, when you're into the corporate job, you get comfortable, nice paycheck yes. is coming in. <laughs> You, you, you don't want to you don't want to mess things up right yes. you have the weekends uh, after five you are free you do whatever you want but then finally I, I took this decision I said okay no enough is enough now you know I want to do something on my own and then uh, in parallel we were starting uh, uh, to open our restaurant which was a quick services style uh, it's still there it's called Delhi Street Delhi being the capital of India uh, so this was a quick services style it is located in the McAllister Place Mall in St. John yes. Um, everyone, you're welcome there. <laughs> uh, so, so we serve uh, uh, Indian cuisine, restaurant, as well as the street food that comes from India as well. 
So that was my start in the business. Uh, I did that for about a couple of years. I'm still doing it. Uh, we also started some other retail ventures. Uh, <clears throat> we, we do the customization, cell phone accessories and repairs. We have uh, retail stores in St. John as well as in Fredericton. And then um, I purchased my own house in 2019. Okay. That what got me interested into the whole real estate thing because mm -hmm. I was very uneducated on this front that how to do the real estate purchase, what to do. I mean, even all the small, simple steps. So I had no idea. I did a lot of study back then and it was very interesting and it got me interested and I thought I can help people. <clears throat> Since I purchased my house, I used to be the person who always would help everyone, all of my friends to do these purchases. Yes. So I was kind of uh, still involved in real estate even before I got licensed. And then finally, I decided to take my license approximately two years back. Okay. And since then, I'm fully involved in uh, real estate. And now we are into the construction renovations and all those things too. So, well, it seems to be like an interesting yeah. story. So my second question for you, Shabat Bhai, is going to be, what is the current market value looking for houses and lands in the province of New Brunswick? I know we're going to be focusing on St. John particularly because this is your field, right. of expert. this is your city of expertise, mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. But you can also tr talk about neighboring cities like Fredericton and Moncton. Yeah. And what sort of insights do you have? Because you are currently in the market and I think yeah. the insights and the first-hand experience you have been experiencing through your work and through your service to this community right. uh, can give a can give a deeper perspective to the audience uh, watching these videos today. Sure, uh, I'll try my best to answer this question. Um, I, like you mentioned, I mainly operate in the Greater St. John area, so St. John, Rossick, with Pemsis, although I am licensed to operate in the whole New Brunswick. So, um, the uh, housing market is, is, is pretty good, uh, I should say, for sellers, um, uh, because uh, uh, the market prices are plumbing actually every day. Recently, the interest rate has gone down as well, just a tiny bit uh, from the Bank of Canada. So that is a big relief. Um, and uh, right now, on an average, the residential house, the average average sale price in this area yes. is a little over $300,000. Okay. That's, That's the average. Uh, of course, there are some less, but some more. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to find a decent house in the desirable neighborhoods where you want to grow your family, you mm -hmm. want nice schools and everything, I mean, you should be looking at spending around three to four hundred thousand dollars. That's what's happening. Okay. Of course, there are options cheaper, uh, but it depends on where you want to be, what sort of neighborhood you want to be. So that's what's happening with the with the real estate. And uh, I don't know if you want me to elaborate on anything specific or uh, just in... Uh, no, I think that's that's good yeah. enough for the audience to yeah. know yeah. Uh, what the market value is and for people who are currently thinking of purchasing land uh, or buying uh, residential or commercial properties yeah. i think he's provided you some uh, yeah. you know tips and on I, low location and, and about the land i mean um uh so land does not get the same sort of appreciation as the house would get oh, however i have seen in the recent times even the lands are, are are going pretty quick too i mean until about i would say seven eight months back there were so many lands in the market like if you look at the real estate portal but now things have you know continuing to go down so i know that even the market of lands is also kind of uh, taking over however they are never you, you will never get the appreciation on the land as much as that you, what you would get on a, oh, on, on a, on a house here. Yeah. Okay. Also, there are different sort of lands. You can just buy a single lot to build your own house. Okay. You can have a big piece of land where you want to subdivide it into so many lots. And of course, you can go to some rural areas too where you want to, uh, uh, you know, do a cottage or any sort of hobby farm or anything like that. So it, it really depends like what sort of on property you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So I think a follow up question I have for you after this is for someone like me who is mm -hmm. unfamiliar with the process of owning or renting or even leasing a property, residential property in St. John, New mm -hmm. Brunswick, Canada, uh, please, can you go through the process of how you can, you know, mortgage a house for yourself or sure. how you can buy a piece of land? What sort of transactions happen uh, there? I, I think the best uh, way to answer this question is that I'll take my own example, how uneducated I was when I was in the market to buy my own house. Mm -hmm. The very first basic thing that I want to tell everyone, which including me, I had no idea that most people think 
So first of all, if you if you're looking for a house, Realtor.ca is your best friend. So no Realtor, so <laughs> Realtor.ca <laughs> is owned by Canadian Real Estate Association, which okay. is the federal regulatory authority, which basically manages the the whole real estate. Okay. So there are bodies at federal level, provincial level, and even at the uh, at, at the city level. Um, but the, but the Realtor.ca is owned by uh, CREA, Canadian Real Estate Association. So if you're looking for a house, most likely you have gone to realestate.ca already and you like the house. One myth or one thing that people don't know about, which I want to clear, and this was me as well. Most people think when they go on house and let's say you're looking at one, two, three, whatever street, yep. there is always a name there. People think that you always have to call that particular agent or a realtor to book an appointment for that house. That's not correct. Okay. What that's telling you is that is the person who has listed the house in the market. It's like the it's like that the seller has appointed that listing agent who is listing the house in the market, but you want to make sure you are working with one person. It's yes. very important. So you don't have to call each and every realtor on different houses. Mm -hmm. You are just gonna choose one realtor who is best for you. And that person is licensed to go and show you any property you want in New Brunswick, right? Okay. So that is the number one thing. And this was me because I literally have called 15 different realtors, believe me, when I was in the market <laughs> because I had no idea. I always used to see the house and call this person, hey, is this still available? But okay. you don't have to do that. So one thing is make sure that you have chosen one realtor uh, who you think understand your needs and mm -hmm. who is basically working for you because the role of the realtor is very important in educating the clients. So I have to make sure I'm educating my clients and make sure that I tell them what they don't know. Yes. Because my job is not only just to find the houses and show you, because mm -hmm. if this was needs to be done, you don't need a realtor, don't right? Need a realtor, yes. You will need me because I can give you a little bit more information than what you would have. So that's the number one thing. Uh, number two in this market, I would say, you need to know what your affordability is. This saves your time as well as the, the, the realtor's time who you are working with. Uh, if you are buying in cash, of course, you know what your budget is. But in most cases that I have seen people go with the banks, they do the mortgages. In that case, it is critical that you work with your mortgage broker or the bank, whoever you like, and make sure you have a pre-approval. Okay. Pre-approval is not the guarantee that you're gonna get the financing for the house. Pre-approval is just saying that the banks or the mortgage broker have looked at your finances. You make X, Y, Z income. You and your spouse or your household income is this. Basis that information, this is the amount that you may be eligible to borrow from the bank, okay. right? Yeah. So for example, if I make whatever money in my salary, bank can tell me that, hey, here is your pre-approval letter. You are qualified to do the purchase up to $500,000. So this is critical for two reasons. One, it will help your realtor to narrow down the searches to for the properties that are in your budget, Yes, which is number which one, is important, yes. because you don't want to be looking at the properties which are over your budget. Then you go to the bank okay. and the next thing, oh my God, you know what? I'm not uh, able to afford this property you have already have attachments with that property which was expensive one yes and now if I show you a property which is two hundred thousand dollars cheaper the chances are you're not gonna like it mm -hmm. because your expectations are already here already here, right yes. so it is so it is important that you know what your budget is so that the your your real estate professional can can sort down the list um, uh, to match your needs and then these days because this is the seller dominating market there are multiple offers, if not on the, all the properties, but most of the properties that you're going to buy in the good neighborhoods. And sellers are not even wanting to entertain any offers if there is no pre-approval attached. Okay. Because okay. when you have 10 offers sitting in front of you for one house, you are, you are the boss, right? Yes. So you're just going to look for, okay, tell me who does not have pre-approval. These three, okay, keep them on the side. I yes. don't want to deal with them, right? Mm -hmm. So pre-approval is one of the things that you should always have okay. in this in these market. It's not obligatory, it's not mm -hmm. mandatory, but it is highly, highly strongly recommended that you have to have a pre-approval. Okay. So uh, that, that's what I would say for starters. I mean, of course, uh, then uh, once you have the pre-approval, uh, in short, to summarize, then your real estate professional should narrow down the searches for the houses. Yes whichever ones you like we book the appointment mm -hmm. me or whoever else you're working with our job is to make sure we take you to the house we give yes. you all the information we give you all the disclosures any problems with the house any history with the house yes. 
once you have made the informed decision then we write the offer yes writing the offer in itself is a big topic which i don't want to get into now because these days of course it's it's the multiple offer situation mm -hmm. and we have to be creative in how we are writing the offer because there are a lot of rejections going on these days which oh, is very common yeah. but assuming once the offer is accepted just to go through the whole process once the offer is accepted we usually pay the deposit on the house and then we set the closing date closing date is the date when the actually money changes the hands okay so, you so that's where the exchange yeah, of exactly. money happens so so basically the lawyers are involved right yes. so you're going to have your lawyer sellers will have their lawyer mm -hmm. closing date is when your lawyer will pay uh, the seller's lawyer and you will get the uh, keys and okay. you become the legal owner of the house okay. that's the closing date right mm -hmm. of course it, it's not as easy as I, what i've explained yes. here i can go into the detail but that's the that's but the, that's the life cycle that's the summary yeah. and outline yeah. of the whole process yeah so shabahat bhai please can you give some sort of advice or some golden tips and tricks for our viewers here today who are looking to stepping into this world of property or maybe they're thinking about owning a house mm. or maybe leasing a house or owning a piece of land for you know commercial or business business uh, opportunities yeah uh, so coming back to my previous point once you made sure that you are your affordability is there to purchase a house i highly highly recommend for anyone to purchase the house as soon as they can. I mean of okay. course people have different opinions about this. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is that if you can afford it, yes. I would say buy it because it's never too late. I mean there are some people I have seen they are comparing the prices from 2 years oh my god you know why should I pay $100,000 more for okay. this house now because it was cheaper. Yes, it's going to be expensive again in next 2 years. Mm -hmm. So it is so it is never too late. So if you can afford, I would say don't delay. Yes. You can you should you should just buy it as soon as possible. Okay. Some other things you should keep in mind is you need to make sure buying a house is is some sort of planning, right? Buying mm -hmm. house is not like a car which which you can switch or not like a cell phone which you can switch like in few months. Buying a house means that you are giving a commitment for certain years. Yes. It needs some sort of planning. So don't just think point in time. Always think what's going to happen to you next 5 years. Yes. Are you going to get married? Are you planning to have kids, People, you know? Yeah. Are you planning to maybe rent the portion of the house, you know? What sort of income do you have? Mm -hmm. Maybe you want a house which you're just living by yourself but you're thinking I should get something where I can rent the basement or something, right? To yes. generate some income. So just think and discuss with your family what are your plans? Are you planning to be here for next 5 years, right? Yes. Uh so so don't don't just like buy like in in a, in a moment always make sure you're doing the planning especially in the case of the kids it is very important that you're always making sure that which school you're going to send your kid to right okay. because the schools yes. are linked with your address yes. so there is there is always a good idea you can go to the website the school's website mm -hmm. and you can say okay i'm going to live at 123 whatever street they will tell you which school is it mm -hmm. are you okay with sending your kid to that school right yes. maybe you want different school i mean every every parents have different uh, choices you know i have ever spoken to parents they have one specific school which they love and that's where they want to send their kid to so make sure your 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 address yes. is is basically in that neighborhood which okay. is very important so so these kind of plannings are required uh, i i always tell people that just yes, buy as soon as possible you can to mm -hmm do the planning right yes. and always i would say that give this house a commitment for at least 4 to 5 years minimum mm -hmm. because if you are thinking okay i'm going to buy now and maybe i will sell it uh, in a year or so yes you can and in this market i mean everything is going very quick mm -hmm. but i mean your chances of making a lot of dollars out of it are slim if you are trying to turn it around so quick okay. right yeah. so always always give some sort of commitment of course things change emergencies happen situation changes you always have to do what you need to do but these are the things you keep in mind another thing i say to people is especially for the first time buyers mm -hmm. please make sure and please keep this in mind this is your first house and this is not going to be your last house Yes. The statistic says that people in their lifetime they change four to five houses. Okay. So you're never never going to live well maybe but the chances are most likely this is not going to be your only house, right? Because 
when you're starting your career, maybe you're just two people, just a couple. Of course, you don't want that big of a house. As your family grows, maybe your parents are with you, maybe your kids are with you, you need a bigger house, right? Mm -hmm. As you grow older, your kids are moving out, you know, you don't need that much space, people uh, downgrade again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people also tend to go into the condominium, so they don't have to worry about snow cleaning, grass mowing yes. and all that, right? So, so, so don't get stuck about, I want that perfect house. Okay. right yeah uh, as long as house is meeting whatever your needs are I mm -hmm. would say you should go for it there is always room for improvement that you can do some renovations do all yes. that and even if there are some sacrifices that you have to make I think you should be open to it because it's never going to happen that you will get a perfect house right mm -hmm. I mean the house where I live in it's it's a very nice house but of course it's not perfect right my wife doesn't like the kitchen <laughs> right so so yeah. that's the so that's that's uh, uh, that that is something that we need to keep in mind uh -huh. um, also I would say the same thing for the sellers so if you're okay. a seller you need to plan things in advance so because whenever you sell there is a plan either you're moving out yes. of the province you're moving out of the country or maybe you want to buy another house so keep in mind what you're planning for what you need Oh. Always make sure that you're keeping your house maintained because the cleaner the house, the nicer the house. It's yeah. the aesthetics basically which which sell which your house, counts, right? Yes. Buying a house is most times is an emotional decision. It is, yes. If you're planning to do renovations, it is always recommended to renovate your kitchen and the washrooms because yes. that is what attracts people the most, right? Mm -hmm. So so those are those tiny little things. I mean, always hire a professional. Yes. Um, uh, you know, uh, we can give you some... Uh, uh, some important tips and tricks what you need to do you have to make sure that your house is uh, all nice and clean sometimes you know we also do the staging to make sure house is looking nice mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day every situation is different every situation is unique yes. this is why it is very important that you have to be having a knowledgeable professional working for you yes. and I always say that please be open with your realtor whoever you're working mm -hmm. with you don't need to hide anything okay we are obligated by our license to make sure that we are keeping the confidential yes. confidentiality of your of the information that you're sharing with us right okay. so don't worry about no realtor everyone is professional they're not gonna yeah. go and talk about you yes. I, I mean I, I live here and I work with so many people I work with so many people who are my friends uh, but it, it is my obligation and it is my duty of my license that I don't disclose anything. So I would say just be open about your situation, whatever your situation are, whatever is going on in your life. I'm there to make sure that I give you the service and that's all, right? Yeah. When I'm wearing my professional hat, I'm just speaking with Jahar, you know, okay, this is your need and that's all. If I'm meeting with you anywhere else, we don't talk about it. So, yeah. so make sure whoever you're hiring, Yes. This should be the quality in that person because confidentiality in this field is very, very important. So oh, um, I think yeah, that's amazing. So you always need to make sure, number one, time is money. If you can, if you have the financial means to buy property now, uh, you know, uh, property values are going to appreciate in the future. Like Shabad Bhai said, make, that, make the right decision at the right time. Time is essential. Number two is to be open with your realtor. Number three is to always seek professional guidance from these people because people like him are people who understand the dynamics of the field and can give you the perfect piece of advice. No? One, one last thing I want to add is, so I mentioned a bit about how cluttered the market is, how, yes. how busy is it because the inventory is less, there are more buyers, mm -hmm. as a result there are multiple offers on the table. So please be very open about getting your offers rejected. So don't get stuck to one house. It is very commonly happening these days that people's offers are getting rejected seven, eight, nine times, even more. Okay. I have one client, we got rejected 10 times, right? So cool. nothing to be feeling bad about it. Mm -hmm. It is just the nature of the market because yes. there are people, they are bidding more and more. So if the house is listed for 350, I mean, someone is gonna pay 400, 450, I mean, whatever. It depends on the neighborhood, it depends on the house, depends on the condition of the house. So don't get upset if your offer is gonna be rejected. Believe me, you will find something, but just stay on path, just make sure you're following the advice of your, of your realtor. But don't get upset about it. It is very common, you're not the only person. I would say seven out of 10 people are dealing with rejected offers these days because that's how it is i mean okay. if there are 15 offers on the house only one person can get it right 
14 others will face the rejection. So, I mean, that's the reality of it. Mm. Okay. There you go. Another crucial yeah. piece of mm. advice from the professional himself. Mm. Last but not least, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So what sort of advice do you have for people like me who are maybe looking into, you know, becoming a realtor once they're done with their education mm -hmm. or the bachelor's or mechanic or their master's from their universities so what sort of advice do you have for people who are transition thinking about transitioning into this career path and uh, thinking about becoming a licensed realtor for the province of new brunswick right uh, uh, i love this profession it is uh, i feel it's, it's a very good profession and i would uh, encourage everyone who is interested to join mm -hmm. um, a lot of people reach out to me asking this question. Some of them, they want to do it on the side as a part-time job. Uh, they have their full-time job. And because, I mean, let's be honest, realtor's job looks very fancy from the, from, from, from the outside, right? Because, yes. I mean, of course, you would be feeling that this guy is selling houses, making commission and making good money. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Uh, we get paid by the commission. We are not the salaried employees of the brokerages we work with. We are fully paid by commission. Um, however, that's not for everyone. So my my personal preference is, I mean, of course, I cannot uh, I cannot say for everyone. Mm -hmm. I say that if you want to join this profession, I highly recommend that do this full time. I don't personally feel that you can do this part time, because doing it part time, yes, you can help some clients. Maybe you can help your family and friends, but you cannot grow your um, grow your network because mm -hmm. the problem is. I mean, you are working nine to five or nine to seven, yes. whatever, then your availability is only limited, right? And then yes. you have your family and to spend time with, so it, it becomes very problematic. Realtor's job is very diverse. I mean, I cannot say that I don't want to work on Sunday. Yes, I can say that, I mean, in a way, but not really, because I have to show houses to my clients. I mean, for example, right after this interview, I have to go and meet with someone. I have an appointment on Sunday, right? Yeah. That is the job that I have accepted by my own will. Mm -hmm. And whoever wants to join, you should be very open to working late hours, working on the weekends. This does not mean that I don't get time with my family. I do get it, of course. I have flexibility. But the point is that you have to make things work for yourself. Yes. This cannot be a nine to five corporate job. That okay. is number one. I personally feel that whoever is doing it needs to do it full time. There is a good potential. The other thing is that you should be okay with the fluctuation in the income. Yes. There is there is no income. fixed permanent income here. Mm -hmm. I mean, some months you're gonna be doing great. You will do four closings. Closings as in selling the houses, Deals, you yes. get paid. Another month you will not do anything, right? So you have you should be okay uh, with it. Uh, initially, is it's gonna be a tough start. Of course, it takes time for people to trust you. Uh, to listen to you so your first deal is always going to be difficult mm -hmm. in my experience it always gets it smooths out you get more confidence you know how to yes. do things uh, your your level of knowledge and everything goes up so mm -hmm. things work out if you are putting the effort if you are putting your 100 percent i don't see any reason why you cannot be uh, successful in this career uh, if you want to join uh, the uh, uh, if you want to get the license to yes, a re uh, realtor um, the you have to basically contact NBREA, which is New Brunswick Real Estate Association. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the ones who make sure that you study and pass the examination, which is required by uh, the for, for the license. Basically, um, they also require you to take a small uh, kind of a online exam by NBCC. And what they do is it's like I think maybe half an hour or an hour. That exam is, it's not an exam, it's like a self-paced training kind of thing okay. that basically tells you how it is, feels, how it feels like to be a realtor. Real so it's gonna tell you, okay, are you are you okay with what I'm telling you, fluctuation in the income? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with working on the weekends? Are you okay with compromising your family time? I mean, they will give you all the good and bad things about the uh, being a realtor. And then they say, okay, let's decide now, do you still wanna do it, right? If you say, yes, I'm okay with everything, then you contact New Brunswick Real Estate Association. You say, hey, I want to appear in the exam. Uh, I think they will charge you some, I don't know the exact amount. I think it's close to $3,000. Uh, they will send you some books at your yes. uh, house, 500 pages each, like those thick books, uh, which <laughs> yeah. you have to study. Once okay. you think that you have done enough uh, study, yes. you call them again and you say, okay, I want to appear in the examination okay, now. Okay, written right? examination. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So examination has multiple choice and then there are some other things too. I won't go into that detail, but you have to do the, you have to clear the exam. Once you did that, 
Then you basically apply with the Financial and Consumer Association of New Brunswick, it's called FCNB. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who issue you the license. So the license, the condition is that you should pass the examination, which you would have done by now, hopefully. Yeah. The condition number two is that you have to be employed with one of the brokerages. Yes. So brokerage, so you may be hearing the names like Royal Page, Exit Realty, Remax, like I personally work with Exit, um, Exit Realty Specialist. All these names, they are considered as brokerage or in the professional or, or in the actual language, like in terms of NBREA, they call them agent. Agents, yes. They, they act as a regulator and our managers. So there is a manager who at exit uh, is my manager kind of thing. And that manager actually holds the license of all the real estate professionals like me. So all the real estate professionals who are working for exit brokerage or any other brokerage, mm -hmm. those license needs to be held by a manager. So manager has a different license. Okay. Right? The job of brokerage is to make sure you are doing everything correct because uh, you're, you're dealing with huge chunk of money in the in the real estate market. And uh, we want the, the government wants to make sure that you're not skipping anything. All the paperwork is accurate, you know? Mm -hmm. There is no money laundering going on. Yes. I, I mean, there are all sorts of things. So there are like lots and lots of forms in the background. So I mean, apart from me showing the houses to you, mm -hmm. there is also lots of admin work that I have to do like in the background. All that admin work needs to go to my brokerage and they make sure everything is good to go. And they are the ones who actually pay me my commission. Mm -hmm. Of course, they have their own share as well yes. in it. That's the business model. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how it works basically. But if anyone needs any help, I'm more than happy to help. Uh, you know, if you need any any coaching or anything, yeah. uh, feel free to feel free no. to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to assist anyone. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Shabad Bhai. And we are going to be uh, having his details in the description of the video. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk about property and mm. for people who are looking to stepping into this career path, uh, he's given us firsthand insights and detailed, uh, detailed analysis of yeah. what the market value is for houses, for buying pieces of land in New Brunswick, especially in St. John. And well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so thank much you. for your time. Thank you for thank you for having me. And uh, I've intentionally not gone too much detail into yes. anything because it, otherwise, you know, this would become boring. But if you have any questions, any of your viewers have any yes. questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will more than happy to go like talk about this in depth. For sure. Oh, 100 percent. You can reach out to the professional himself. Thank you. Thank you. Your support keeps me going and helps bring more amazing content your way.